Hello, everyone. Let's give everyone a minute to file in here, and then we'll jump right in and get started pretty close to right on time, because it's more fun to start right on time when people are here on time. So we'll give everyone a minute, and then we will jump right in. Um, as always, if you have questions, um, please use the um, Q&A function. If you want to chat, absolutely go into the webinar chat. Uh, you can do either one that you want there. Um, but generally speaking, I would prefer Q&A on one side than the other. So that would be super helpful for me. Um, otherwise, we will jump right in. All right. People are filing in. We are good to go. Okay. Let me share my screen. All right. So goal today, if you can let me know in the chat that you can see my screen properly, that would be great. Always making sure we're showing the right one. Or if you have the ability to use the chat, do we got it? Okay, we got it right this time. All right, perfect. So what we're going to do, we are going to go through, and today, a little bit different than the past webinars we've done. So normally, when we've been doing webinars, there's been like a flow, walking through like start to finish. This time, it's 18 tactics, 18 tactics you can go and try right away. Some are simpler, some take a little bit more time, but it'd be more like you're getting started on it and taking action today. Um, so there's not necessarily like a logical flow of like start to finish of a strategy. I just put 18 together. I put them into the webinar and we're going to walk through them. Feel free to ask as many questions as you want about like the implementation side, for example, or if anything like that, uh, happy to answer them and we'll jump right in. So there'll be kind of like a random collection of different things you can try to put into your business. Not all are digital, some are offline stuff. Um, but we're going to jump right in. So tactic number one is one that I personally love. Uh, I'm going to get to it in a sec, but I can tell you the story of how I came up with this one. And I have told it on some webinars before, so you might have heard it. Um, I was at a webinar, uh, or sorry, a mastermind. And there was a guy there who said, Google who the most handsome man in Toronto was. <laughs> and so you Google it, and it came up with him as the number one option. Because he realized is no one's trying to rank for that term. So he might as well have some fun with it and make it him. Um, he also did it for if you Google his name and the name net worth, it would also then go to a page he set up. Uh, that was basically like, it's none of your business what my net worth is. And it gave me an idea. And that was essentially, let's try and rank on Google for really, really niche terms that nobody else is trying. The first thing I think it's worth it for all of you to do, though, is create a page for your phone number. And the reason for that is a lot of people nowadays, when they get a phone call from a number they don't know, they do not pick up the phone. They Google who it was that just called them. And if the first result is like what you see on the screen is, did this try calling you? That was me. They are way more likely to click on that and then it leads to the specific thing you want. So you can see like I set that up for my phone number as an example, like that took less than a day and it was the top result for my phone number on Google. Um, there was a separate reason I was trying to get it to the top quickly um, because for whatever reason, Yahoo or what was it Yelp wouldn't take my phone number being associated with my old realtor business. And so like if I called people who like their caller ID pulled from Yelp, it would put like my name and the brokerage I was with still, um, which is a pain. So I want to start trying to outrank that and downgrade it. So this is a really easy thing to do because no one's trying to rank for your phone number. So similarly, if you have a new listing coming up, no one's trying to rank for that listing until it's listed. So if you can get your a page on your site about that listing up before it's listed, you can kind of be the top one there pretty quickly. So start thinking about like in your area specifically, the more local it is, the better. What are those really, really niche things? And this could be something that maybe only two, three, four, five people a month might even Google at most. 
um, or even less, because you just want to control when those higher intense searches might happen. You're the first one that's going to be there because those really low volume keywords, people aren't trying to rank for from a professional SEO standpoint. But if it's like a higher value thing that would lead to that right moment, this is where it can work really, 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 really well. So we like to push that up as much as possible. Um, so that's tactic number one. Uh, this one is super easy for you guys to get up there basically. And you can Google my phone number there. You can see it there uh, and see how I set up the page. Basically, I just set it up. So like 905-758-9091 had both the dashes end without the dashes. And you'll see I basically keyword stuffed the page. Or something like this where there's no one else competing with you. You can go a little bit more on the keyword stuffing without worrying about Google and its impact because you're the only one. So you can keyword stuff just to make sure it ends up there. Um, but Google that number. You'll end up on that page and you'll be able to see how I set it up. And you can basically just mostly copy it, change the wording to fit your personality because as you can see, it's very much suited to mine. Um, and then you can copy the same thing. And within a couple of days, you'll start ranking for your phone number. No problem. Tactic number two, uh, this is an offline one that I think everyone who works with families should be doing. Even if you don't work with families, you can even do it with like pets and stuff like that. It's just once a year, get a park, get a photographer and tell all your clients to come and take family photos. This is one that, especially on the family side, Everybody wants more family photos and knowing that every year they could have one. And on your end, it'll cost you the day of the photographer. And depending on where you live, where the options are for shooting, maybe it will cost you like renting a venue. But what I love about these is everyone who gets them loves them. And then it also gives you the opportunity to talk to your clients more from the invite, the follow up. And then, or like the reminder, the day of, because you're going to want to be there with them to say hi to everyone coming in, then a thank you for attending, and then actually sending the photos after. And then for like your A++ kind of clients, you can even go get a copy of it printed, framed, and sent over to them. Um, but this is just a great tactic. I think everyone should do once a year that, you know, they will definitely more likely kind of be that client for life if they know like every year I'm going to get a new updated family photo. Um, so that's a big one. Now back to the paid advertising side. I really like this one. This is my housing category workaround. So if you're running ads on Facebook, you know that there is the giant pain in the butt called the housing category. What it does, if you aren't familiar on the off chance, 15 mile radius and you can't target interest based anymore. Uh, I mean, there's some general interest, but Basically, you cannot target based on interests anymore. So there is one main way around this. And basically what we do, and when I say around it, I mean, a lot of the times, like it doesn't apply to every type of ad that has a category, like it should specifically be for like homes for sale. But if you're running an ad that's like, here's a education piece of content around how to buy a home. They will reject it almost every time, even though it shouldn't be included in that. So using this tactic, you kind of get around that. Um, and basically what you want to do is you need to create a video that's not real estate related. This could be as simple as here's my three favorite businesses in this neighborhood. Here's my three favorite coffee shops. Here's like literally it could be anything. I'd make it community focused typically. But you want to create a video that would be at least, say, 20 to 30 seconds long. And you can go longer than that. doesn't matter. Um, but you want it to specifically, again, not be real estate related. You don't want to use terms like, hi, this is Andrew. I'm a real estate agent who helps you buy and sell homes. Now let's learn about this. You want to basically make it so that the algorithm would not read the transcript of your video or the words in the video and think there's a chance it's about real estate. So using the words like buying, selling, real estate, homes for sale, homes, avoid all that. It's just simple like, here's my favorite coffee shop. Very simple. Then you go into the custom audiences on Facebook and create a custom audience of anyone who watches three seconds of that video. Pro tip. Then also exclude anyone from that custom audience who's watched three seconds. Actually, this is when we get to the ad side. But 
you want to have it set up because you're going to be both including it and excluding that same audience at different times. So you have this custom audience of anyone who watched three seconds of this very clearly non-real estate video. We then take that video and we run an ad to the hyper-defined niche. And there's two ap approaches for this. One, you could go by postal code. You could go really small area. You can go just your town if it's a lot smaller than a 15 miles. But whatever the size of the audience you want to create, you can hyper-focus and target it as much as you want. So now, you know, you anyone who watched that video is in that small area right there. Then when we run the ad, so we say run this ad to everyone who lives in the small area, but exclude anyone who's watched three seconds of the video. So that's what's happening now, because when you typically do a video view campaign, they're trying to optimize for what's called a through play, which is 15 seconds or more. But we want to exclude anyone who's watched three, because all we're trying to do is tag people who live in that area. So we set it to three second video views. Anyone who watches, as soon as they start watching it, they stop seeing your ad to promote it unless they fall out of the audience because it's been a while. And you can set this to constantly be running. And all it's doing is building a custom audience of everybody who lives in that area you're trying to target. And now when you go to a housing ad, you can have it run only to people who watch that video, which were the ones targeted in that smaller one. So it allows you to still do some like farming a neighborhood style advertising with the housing category without that incredible uh, extra amount of spillage. Um, just to be clear, though, don't use this tactic on doing something like advertising a listing this way because they will get you for that. Um, this is more to like do the workaround in areas where it shouldn't be applied, but they still apply it anyways. Um, but this is a really effective way to build up a target audience of people that is more direct than what the housing category will allow so that you can still run an ad to them. You just have to run this extra ad first. Um, it does work quite well. Highly recommend it. If you have any questions about specifically how to set that up, uh, I'm sure we could create a tutorial video for how to do that. All right. Tactic number four. Uh, this is what we call the annual CMA. So this is one that I know quite a few agents do, but this is one of those tactics that I find when I talk about it with people, it's one of the most common ones for, I always meant to do that. I've always wanted to do that. And then they just never actually do it. And this is all this is, is very simply on the anniversary of a home purchase, tell them what their home is worth now. Um, I know a lot of people will send like happy house anniversary cards that doesn't have an updated value. I really like adding the updated value in it. And it's like a simple email along the lines of, hi, congratulations. It's been another year of owning your home since last year when either since you first bought or since the last time I sent you this annual CMA, your home has gone up in value X percent. That means your home is now worth this many thousands or hundreds of thousand dollars more. Here are the options going forward for you. Keep paying your mortgage and building up equity, taking some out to do this, taking some out to do that, uh, refinancing to you know, pay off other debt that's high interest. You could say like takes out to buy investments. You could, you know, there's, you guys know there's a ton of options they can do with that extra equity. It's laying them out for them very simply. And then you say, if you have any questions about how to accomplish any of those, just hit reply and we'll chat. And then I just like to add after that, by the way, if there's anything you've done in the last year to raise or lower the value of your home, just reply to this email, letting me know what it was. And I'm happy to set up a time just to pop by and give you a more accurate evaluation of what your home would actually sell for. Because I sometimes like to give them like a, Hey, this is what it is roughly. Um, but if you are planning like a move, here's what it is. But by laying out their options, you're getting them to think about what possible options there are for them and then giving them that next step. Because most people either just say happy house anniversary or keep it very generic, but you want to be very specific about your home is this percent more or less. Um, and then the other, and then like what that actually is in dollar terms. I know if someone's a bought at the peak and they're down now, that's not always a fun email to send. But if you want to be kind of seen as the expert consultant in their world, 
you're still going to send that email to them and give them what the options are for them at that point as well. But always letting them know what their options are, which the number one option should always be essentially do nothing, keep paying it down. Um, you want to have that up front of like, you don't have to take any extra action here. You can keep doing what you're doing. Um, but also here are your other options as part of this. Um, and it's super simple to do. You just use the home price index. Look at what the percent for that type of home in that neighborhood has changed over the last 12 months. Apply to what their purchase price was and go from there. So super simple and we approach it that way. All right. Next up, tactic number five. This is one that I think everyone should get on doing right away. And this is what we call the how to get a house ready for sale series. So you should be doing this where because I find when a lot of people like do a getting a home ready, it's like one post and it's the entire house. But you don't want to necessarily want to necessarily do it about like one specific house. You want to show like how you go about thinking about a room. And I think one of the easiest ways to do this is just use your own home um, and pick one room at a time and show what you would do to get it ready for sale and explain step by step each action you're taking and why. Your goal here is to show your expertise about doing this. Um, and again, I think that helps a lot with approaching it this way. Um, but one post, like think of how many rooms in your house, that's how many posts you can have out of this. And the bonus part of this, it also helps you clean up your house a little bit while doing it professionally. But start it as a series. So it's like post one, where I'm going to show you how we get a kitchen ready for sale. Walk through step by step how you actually do it. Um, show the before and after. This can be either via images or video. Um, I This is one where video definitely would have an advantage because it gets you to talk. It gets you involved in the video. But you, if you're not comfortable on camera, this can definitely be accomplished with like a carousel where, and you can even show different sides of it. So be like, here's how we're going to get the kitchens ready before the counters. Here's what they are after. And then the next part of the kitchen, here's how we do the before. Here's how we do after. And then the caption of the post, you're going to, again, walk through specifically how you did that. And then the next day or the next week, because you can spread this out if you want. It's And here's now let's go to the next room in the house and show you how to get that ready. That can be a super simple content that people get value from because they see the thought process. And what you want to think of is, is there anything that's not necessarily obvious to the average consumer that we do? That's what we want to highlight. And that's where you want to say, and why, here's why we're doing this part. Um, if you have staging people on your team, this is a great opportunity to have even then them come in and talk to you about it. Um, this is a good time to talk about paint choices and all those different things when you're getting a home ready for sale. But I like to do the how to get a house ready for sale series. And it's some evergreen content that you can definitely also, for example, repurpose into a great addition to like a listing presentation is now you have like, for example, these great before and afters that you can kind of use evergreen and put them right into listing presentations and use it in a lot of different places um, and does get traction really well that any of you, you can do at any time, just using your own house. So this is a chat GPT tactic. Um, a lot of people say that kind of writes in personal and now you can just have it write your own style. I've shared this on our chat GPT webinar but this is one that I actually use quite a, I'd say of the different ones, like when I'm writing marketing for just sell homes, uh, this is the style I use the most is basically what I'll do is I'll take like a section of our website or some copy that we have that I really like, and I'll have it analyze that writing and then, then tell it, okay, use that style to write the following. And this can put out copy that is a lot more personalized. I mean, yes, it's better to have a professional copywriter do as much as possible, but it's also not always in the budget or it makes sense to do that. Um, so this is a very quick way to customize chat GPT in a much more personal way than trying to be like, can you make it sound more professional? Can you make it sound more like this person or that person? You can just paste the writing in that you like, and then say using that style, write a new one for me. Um, really, really effective for getting good copy out of chat GPT.
Next one, uh, we actually use this one quite a bit in different ways, and I'm a big fan of it. Uh, basically, it is a story-based approach uh, for lead gen, and there's a million different ways you can do it. But basically, instead of using the question box to have people ask you questions, you use it as a way to capture emails. Um, it feels a little more formal to people than like just having them send message, but if you wanted to just have them hit send message. You could do that too. Uh, but basically you show your listings and you can do a couple series. So like here, for example, you can see like we used one image for each. You could either do option one of, Hey, we got this new listing. Here's the outside of it. You want the full data sheet in your inbox, drop your email below. They put in their email, you email it to them. Option two is like you share a, you know, two, three, four, five of these different like angles of the home be like you know here's a preview of a home we have coming up for sale or that just hit the market if you want the full data sheet in your inbox drop your email below um you can also use this for like home eval like drop your address below and i will give you a dm based home eval right so like you can again go through this and leverage the features that are built into it um like the other similar idea to this tactic would be like using the poll feature are you planning a move in 2023 or 2024? Yes, no. Everyone who clicks yes, send them a message. Be like, hey, I saw you click yes. Um, is this Facebook or Instagram? This would be on Instagram. Um, you could then push it over to Facebook, but I would do this on Instagram primarily. Um, that's where it works best. But basically any offer that you would run a paid ad for, any thing that like you would want someone's email you don't be afraid to use the question box to get people to put it in uh we found that that can work sometimes even better than just asking a question and having people submit questions um obviously at the end of the day like if you have never had people respond to your stuff you got to start working on getting engagement um and this can be one of the things that like eventually as you're getting more engagement you can drop them through towards but this little tactic is a great way to build your mailing list um, if you have a listing coming soon, you could again, give a little preview and be like, when this hits the market, we'll send you a email with all the data, drop your email below to be the first to find out about this one. All right. That is tactic number seven. All right. Tactic number eight, how to get more consistent open house leads. This is an interesting one is I've had a lot of conversations about this recently. I guess more people are starting to do more and more open houses and it's actually on an episode of over a pint that should be coming out soon if it hasn't come out already i don't think it's come out yet um and we're talking about like the things they were doing to get people to give correct contact information with permission to follow up at the open houses and they were trying to like give lead magnets and all these different things and that's a much too complicated method because they're in an open house because they're interested in that home so all we would recommend doing is creating a sign-in sheet, whether it's printed or a like digital tool like an Open Home Pro, and name, email, phone number, and then a checkbox. And the checkbox is, would you like to get updates about this property, including the sold price when it sells? Yes, no. And if they check that, now you have the permission to follow up with them about that house because they're going through their open house. They are way more interested in this than the average person. Almost everyone is going to want to know, like, did you get an offer? Is there another open house? Is the price changing? It, what's the, what did it sell for? Great opportunity to do that on the open house. If you're doing it through a digital program, like a open home pro where it shows like one screen and then the next screen and then the next screen, I would put the question about, do you want to get updates about this property at the start? Because if you make that the last question, they've already gone through name, email, and phone number. They might have given you fake information at that point. Whereas if you put the question at the front about, would you like to get updates in your inbox about this property? Now they know they have to give the right information to actually get it into their inbox. But this is definitely the easiest way to get consistent leads from your open houses and especially as a way to get the neighbors to sign in with their information to be followed up on, because even neighbors are going to be curious about this. And then in your follow-up information, when you're sending them out, you can add in 
different things about like, you know, do you want to find out what your home would sell for? Um, look here and you can have again a, a little series of a mini drip campaign going out to the people who register this way. And then obviously make sure you're actually sending them updates about the property as they happen. Uh, because that can also be quite effective there. Um, but this one definitely is one that we you can see a pretty consistent increase in the amount of people who will sign in with permission for you to follow up with them. Uh, this one I use all the time. Um, as a tactic for everyone to do, because I think this is like the thing about the most simplest thing that you can do to get more engagement on social media. Um, I've probably mentioned this on half the webinars I've done. So I think it's that important. And it's the 555 plus one rule. And what that means is every day on social, you like five people's posts, you leave five comments and send five DMs. Um, and again, like I mentioned, every time I talk about this, a fire emoji and a flexing arm emoji do not count as a comment. It has to be what Facebook would refer to as a significant comment, which should be at least like five or six words, ideally ending in a question because you want them to reply to your comment. Same goes for the DMs. You want it to be something that they're going to reply to that starts a conversation. It doesn't even have to be a conversation about real estate because ultimately you're trying to accomplish two things here. One is you're trying to get them to start a relationship with you. So whether they have a relationship already and you're strengthening it or they don't really have one and you're trying to build it, conversations is what builds relationships. Liking a post doesn't build a relationship. Number two is what we call the last 50. To, and I've again talked about this before, but the, to oversimplify all of social media, and there's some variances to this, again, oversimplification, I understand there's nuance. You are going to see content roughly from the last 50 people you engaged with. You are trying to stay in people's last 50 posts because if you're in their last 50, when you post again, they are more likely to see it. And the more you engage with them, the more likely they are to engage with you. So if you wonder why people don't engage with your content, a lot of the times you have to stop and think of like, am I realistically in on that many people's last 50? If you have not been in their last 50 engagements, the odds of them seeing your next content are a lot smaller. Plus, if they're not used to engaging with you, they're more likely just to see your post and keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a pretty consistent rule of doing the 555. Five, five. And then the plus one is me just being difficult. Um, that means on every day, you should. So like each week, so next week, or this week you do 555, five, five, next week you do 666, six, and then you do 777, 888, 999, 1010. And that way you're kind of going until you find the limit of this is too many for me to keep up with. And that might mean you go back to 555, five, five. Um, but see how far you can push this uh, to do consistently. And I see there's a question here. For your 555 plus one rule, does it apply to only Facebook or Instagram? Does it matter how the 555 rule apply? For example, can a person like two on Facebook and three on Insta, comment two on Insta and comment on three posts on Facebook? So, I mean, there is not right, there's no right or wrong thing here, right? Like you are trying to engage with people. I would typically say your best bet is to apply this to each platform you're planning on being active on. So if you want to be active on Instagram and Facebook, try and do 555 on Instagram, try and do 555 on Facebook. Because again, on each platform, you're trying to be in people's last 50 interactions. By splitting it up, you're minimizing it. And this is also one of the reasons I am a big believer that you don't have to be on every single platform. Um, like for example, Twitter, 90% of your time should be engaging with other people's, even threads, which that's a whole other discussion. Um, similarly, like you want to be engaging way more than you're posting. Um, Instagram, it can be a little bit more of a mix. Facebook can be a little bit more of a mix. Uh, um, but if you're going to take a platform seriously to try and get business in it, you have to be in people's last 50. So the more you like essentially dilute the 555 across different platforms, um, the harder it will be to stay in their last 50. But any consistent engagement is better than none. So even if that meant you did one, 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 and then next week, try two, 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 yes, you could, it'll be a lot harder to move the needle, but like five, five, five every day 
is one of those things that you will start seeing more followers. You will start seeing engagement and eventually you'll start seeing clients come from that type of thing. Um, but please keep the, like, if you commit to one thing, it's doing this every day. Um, that's one that I need to get better at even myself personally. Um, cause I don't do it with enough intention right now, but I know every time I do this with intention for any period of time, my numbers go up, more leads come in, all that stuff. Um, but then, you know, as I get busy, it's an easy thing to sometimes let go. So this is definitely a, I need to practice even what I preach sometimes. <laughs> um, but highly recommend this for anyone here today. Tactic number 10, strategic emails. Um, as the great Dean Jackson says, you only send emails on days you want to make money. Um, strategic emails, I just are very much to me inspired by Dean Jackson. Um, and these are just very simple emails you send out one to three sentences each time. These are not big in-depth emails. Everyone in your database should get one to three of these a year. So kind of common ones we look at doing would be like, hey, I have a buyer looking in your neighborhood. Um, none of the homes on the market for them are working right now. Have you heard of any neighbors thinking of a move? I don't ask them specifically if they'd want to move, just have they heard of any neighbors? Um, please don't do that email if you don't actually have a buyer. Uh, the next one, um, another one would be like in the area. So that'd be like, hey, I'm going to be in your area next week. Uh, and I got about an hour between appointments. If you know, you'd like to find out what your home would, you know, be worth today, I'm happy to pop in and give you like an up to date valuation, no charge, nothing like that, just in the area, I thought you'd be interested. And then if you don't have anything like that, you want to do just a simple thinking of you email, these actually work really well. Um, so I like to like take note of what people's interests are. So I'll like, give you an easy example that I use often and be like, if you know, one of your clients is really into mountain biking, and you haven't touched base with them in a while. Go see if there's been any mountain biking news recently. And then just send them an email and be like, hey, I saw this and thought you might find it interesting. Like, for example, um, I know there's a gym locally where I live that just recently like, had a program along the lines of, you know, come to the gym and we're going to do this like eight week session specifically designed to build the muscles you need for mountain biking. So this is like a mountain bike session to build your muscle at the gym well if you knew someone who's really into mountain biking they might find that interesting they're just like hey i saw saw this and thought of you thought you might find it interesting here's the link check it out those show that again you care about them as people you're not just thinking of them as the next transaction and it's an easy way to stay in touch and an easy th thing for them to ignore um if they're not into it without feeling like you're being annoying I mean, if you're sending this type of email to every single person in your database, like every month, it gets to be overwhelming. So again, my goal, like one to three times a year uh, type of thing with these types of emails go out to different people in your database. And this is where it's really important to have your database segmented. So like for the got a buyer one, you should be able to go into your CRM and be like, hey, I have a buyer for the Glenway neighborhood. I want to pull up everyone who currently lives in Glenway and be able to send this type of email to all of them. And so again, strategic emails, every day you should be sending out these kind of short and sweet emails, again, designed to get conversations started as much as possible. Um, and again, ideally it's real estate focused. And if you don't have a real estate focused one for any specific person, the thinking of you ones are a nice alternative just to, again, keep you top of mind with them and showing that you're thinking about them. Tactic number 11. Again, I talk about this one all the time. Um, Instead of doing just sold, do it as a case study. Um, and random aside, I put into an AI image generator real estate case study, and this is the image it went with. And I just thought it'd be fun to put it in because I don't know why I just kind of like that image. But you can see, for example, that car has a weird, it looks like it's been in an accident a little bit. Um, but that's a random aside. Uh, but basically, the idea here is instead of doing a typical just sold, turn it into a case study. Um, it's so like, there's a lot of different ways to approach case studies. So it can be like, you know, see how we sold this town home, um, step-by-step. Step. It could be like, see how they set a record setting price in this neighborhood and how we did it. Um, see how, you know, our clients were able to sell the home of their late mother who was a hoarder. Um, and basically the goal here with these is you have after a certain amount of time, a collection of case studies 
that anyone who reaches out to you about a specific type of home, you can send them a case study on that type of home or that type of situation that they can now directly see you were in a similar situation with someone else. And here's the results you got. Um, we like to do these as very story focused. So like you're telling the story of how it went. Um, and as always with something like this, if you're familiar with like story branded marketing, um, the idea is to make your client the hero of the story, not you. So it's like the case study is very much focused on the experience of the seller or the buyer. And you're the, you know, the wise sage guide who's coming through and helping them along this journey of buying or selling. But the key here is that the story is about them because you want potential clients who are reading this case study to be able to read it and put themselves in the position of the clients there. Um, one thing that can help do this really well is have chat GPT write the first draft. So you include all the details about the sale and then ask it to write a story based case study from the perspective of the client. And this will get you 90% of the way there. Then you just need to kind of tune up that case study a little bit and you'll be able to do a really good job. Um, so I highly, highly recommend every chance you get to do a case study on the sale of a home. Um, similarly, like these are great for writing. Um, they're also great video content. At the end of the day, it's better that you just have it, whether it's doing it as video or written or even a podcast. Like you could do it as a podcast style if you really wanted, but you really want to make sure um, you do this well. And then Sandra, I saw your comment about you like to have the session with the housing category hack, please. I don't believe I have like a dedicated video, but what I will do is I will film one. Basically, as soon as I finish this, while the, it's all like processing, I will film one, then try to include it in the follow-up email um, so that I can show you kind of step-by-step -step how to do it. Um, I was, to be honest, always kind of hesitant about like going out there with it in case Facebook saw it and closed the loophole. <laughs> so I never put it out there that publicly um, too much about it. Uh, tactic number 12. So this is the customized list of homes. So this is a really popular ad campaign that like every marketer who talks about, like if you go on YouTube and be like Facebook lead generation, I do it. A million others do it. Um, list of homes. And that's basically like get a list of homes in your inbox, easy way to collect people's contact information. But almost everyone exclusively uses it as a paid advertising call to action and offer where a lot of people don't also use it is like, this is something you can do on organic social. You can do this as an email to your list. You can basically anywhere you put out offers, it doesn't just have to be paid ad lead gen. Like not every post on like your organic social or your emails to your list are going to be calls to action, but every fourth or fifth type of thing, you can put in little offers like this, like anything that works as a paid ad can work as an organic thing or can work as an email to the database. People too often like silo their offers like, okay, this is only an offer for this one specific avenue. You can then take that, like maybe you have to tweak it slightly, but an offer that'd be in a Facebook ad could work as a Google ad. It could work as an email to your database. It could work as an organic post. It could work as a newspaper ad. It could work as a radio ad. Like as long as you know an offer works and we all know a list of homes works because it's the most consistent way to generate leads with paid ads, that it's an offer that can work on any platform. You just have to slightly tweak it so that it fits the style of the platform you're going to advertise it on. Um, and another random one, this is also an AI generated image when I typed in list of homes on a computer. And that's a pretty good quality for an AI generated image that came out in 30 seconds. Um, so yeah, random little thing I was trying out. I used AI for a few of these pages here. Um, but yeah, tag number 12, list of homes. Don't underestimate the value of putting this on your organic social as well um, and trying to push it out that way. And this is one that I love, which is mining Reddit for content. Um, I always kind of mention it with my team or like even on Facebook is like all the people say like, how do you stay ahead of things so much? A lot of them say like, well, I spent a lot of time on Twitter and Twitter, what happens there is always two to seven days ahead of what eventually makes it over to Facebook or Instagram. So it seems like I'm ahead of everyone because of Twitter. 
Now, Reddit is often also a few days ahead of Twitter. Like, there's a reason to kind of say it's like the front page of the internet. Like, this is where a lot of things happen first. And what I love about Reddit is there's communities. Like, you can see here one from my little town of Newmarket. There's 5,200 members in it. And it's a decent size of a little community there. And not every post is active. Like, you can see here the monthly community community thread got zero comments. But 10 days ago, leave a new market soon. What are some must-do things before I go? 19 comments. People come and will post things like this because they went on Google and there weren't any good answers for them. So as someone who's going to make content, it's a really great idea, for example, to go on Reddit, see the types of questions people are asking, see the types of things they're saying, and then make content around that that you can post. So when someone does Google that, Yours is one of the options that come up with great content. Um, depending on the size of the area you're in, some areas will even have like real estate specific ones. Like Toronto, for example, um, would have very real estate specific ones. Um, who do you follow on Twitter for info? It depends on what type of info you're looking for. Um, I'll also just like engage with the type of content I like seeing. So like when ChatGPT was coming out, I engaged purposely with a lot of like AI for marketing related tweets out there that were even for people I didn't follow. And then I let the for you tab of people I don't follow fill up with that type of content. Uh, so like I keep my follower list fairly tight. Um, and then I use the following tab for like news and different things like that. Then when I want to see more specific type of content, I'll go purposely engage with that type of content out there and then let my for you page fill up because it'll use their algorithm to surface more of the content you've been filling up. Similar to like the last 50 idea. If I engage in my last 50 with more like marketing related content, AI related content, or like any specific type of world news, they're going to show me more of that for the next little while. So engage that content then use the for you tab. Um, but again, Reddit is one of the best places to get content ideas when you're running low. Um, I mean, it's one of those things like from an engagement on your end, if you'd like to engage on there, there's some opportunities. Um, but go on here, look what there is in your community and either be active or just monitor, see what type of questions people are asking with the local area and then create content around that so that when the next person Googles it, it's your website they come up on. And this is also a great way to see if there's anything new happening in discussions in the town because anytime there's something new, they're going to generally post it here. And then this one I really like to is to what we call tutorial content. So a lot of people when they're creating content for their website, they make it specifically for Google. But I would create a ton of content that goes on your site. That's that's not the main focus. The main focus is like showing your clients how to do something. So like, for example, how to change your address, how to switch from this provider to this provider in Newmarket or in your town. And that way. Like a lot of people, like I know a lot of agents have this type of content already, but it's like, it's a PDF or a saved email that they send to their clients as it happens. Well, instead send them the links to where you have this content saved on your site, because then you can also pick up other traffic that's out there as well. Um, and you can start having all of this together again, becoming the resource, but SEO is not the main goal here. It's to provide value to your clients. So like anything that would be helpful to your clients in the move, create a page on your website. Like almost it's like, having your own mini Wikipedia on your site about the moving process in your area. So, like, and the more specific you can make it to an area, the better. So this could be simple as like, if you're new to town, here's where you go and get like, you know, new green bins, new this, new this, do this. So like, it's like one page has hyperlinked over to like all the different resources they're going to need. And this is a great thing to send out to your clients when they're at that stage of the journey. But then it will also help you from the SEO standpoint, but think first of, I want to do this as a service to my clients. I already have this, a lot of this information. I'm going to put it up on my website to make it easier for my clients. And then you, there are some bonuses around SEO from it. Um, but tutorial content, I'm a big, big fan of. And just start putting it all up there. Next up is long form 101 con content. So this would be things like a video. And I put an example there from Tom Story. Um, 
financing your first home, buying a condo, selling a condo, buying a hair to Trump, selling a hair to Trump, investing in real estate. But long form 101 content. What I mean by 101 is this gives you essentially, if you think of like the hockey stick curve, gets you to the top of the curve. And then like 201 is the more in depth, nuanced stuff. But if someone were to watch this video or read this blog post, they could get everything they need to know about buying a condo at a basic level from that one piece of content. Um, it's funny because I actually had this slide built and then just recently had a call with Tom when I already had the slide in here. And he was talking about this uh, buyer's guide you can see in the screenshot there that has 8,500 views for a 43 minute video. Um, and he mentioned he has already had eight deals from that video. Um, and most people don't think of like long form content as something that could produce that. And this is the type of thing that does work really, really well, especially if you have an engaged audience. And then you can start getting into things like, well, let's repurpose the content. Cause I can guarantee you now I haven't watched Tom's video, but I could guarantee in that 43 minutes, you could probably take five, 10, 15 clips from it that you can then put on social as individual tips and then say like to get more of this check out our video over on youtube that then is the full thing but having this like long form 101 content is a great thing for you to have from an seo and a value thing but then even just for your clients when someone's reaching out it's something you can send them like someone's like oh i haven't you know bought a home in eight years it's been a long time like i could use a refresher You'd be like great I'm happy to set up a time, but also if you want, I have this video I've created that walks through the whole process. You're also welcome to watch that in the meantime as well. So it's not like you have to necessarily watch this two book a time, but it's like, here's another piece of value if you are interested that you can go through. Um, so long form 101 content is great. And then you can also allude to like the more advanced side of things they can reach out to you to talk to you about. But giving them everything that they would need from that is a great thing. And when you're doing this, try to think about the, my favorite question for content is what do they not know to even ask about? Because like the old, I don't know what I don't know. You want to put that type of information in here because you want them being like, whoa, that's awesome. I had no idea that's how that was or how this worked or how that worked. The more of that you can put in there the better this type of content will be and the more they're going to believe that you're the expert. Uh, and there's another one, PR pitching. So not enough people do this. I see so many people who are like, oh, I wish I'd be like focused in the newspaper. I wish I could be the one that the TV calls to have an interview about it. And most people who are in newspapers with comments as like the source or in there, they weren't like, they didn't wait for the companies to pitch them they proactively went and pitched it. And like I did this when I sold, um, I kind of stumbled onto it, to be honest. I So I used to write two columns a month for my local newspaper. And that was entirely because I was too cheap to buy advertising in it. And I was like, how else could I get in the newspaper? Because so many other people are. Um, and so I just pitched, hey, could I write a monthly market update? And they said, yes. So I ended up started writing every month a here's what's going on. I sold an Aurora. So I was like, here's what's going on in the Aurora real estate market. And I did that. And then I also did an ask a realtor where every month someone could submit a question for a realtor. And then I would answer it in the newspaper column. Uh, it was a great series in the like 14 months that I ran it before I stopped selling. Um, no one ever submitted a question. So I got to make up all my own questions and then answer my own questions. It was great. Um, but I got in every the local newspaper twice a month, every month at no charge because I was just willing to write a post that went into it. And all that was is I called the editor up and said, hey, I'd like to write a story. But then when I all because I was also contributing regularly and I had this relationship with them, when I started doing a Christmas light competition every year. So who had the best Christmas lights in Aurora was a competition we called Light Up Aurora. I now had this contact with someone who was grateful to me because I was giving him so much content that I said, Hey, I'm doing a Christmas light competition called light up Aurora. There's prizes donated from local businesses. We're going to find the best lights. Would you like to write a story about it? Ended up on the front page of the newspaper. They sent a photographer out and all that stuff because I was in there and talking to them and they knew who I was. 
because especially local newspapers are tight on resources. And just like you, they struggle with what type of content to put out regularly. So if you can make their life easy and suggest content and offer to write it for them, like this is, we see this all the time with REM. Someone's like, Hey, how come this person gets featured more than this person or this brand gets featured more than this brand? We're like this brand pitches us more stories than maybe this one, or this person pitches us more stories than this person. And that makes our life easier. As long as we think it's a good, valuable story, we're more likely to put it in. Um, but you know, local newspapers and trade publications work the same. You only have so much time and resources in a day to go like hunting your own content. So sometimes you are waiting for people to approach you with stuff as well. And you can go and create these pitches and send them to your local places. And the next one, this is one I don't see too many people doing, but I think more people should is interviewing locals and because like a lot of people when they're interviewing people on like podcasts they're either going with like other real estate professionals other service people but they never really do ones on like what's it like living in this neighborhood like i think that would make really good content if you can get the right people who could tell the story like especially if you get someone who's like lived in the neighborhood for like 60 years 70 years like i was actually uh last year talking to this man who was born, he's 89 now, and was born in the house that he was still living in. So this family, this house goes back a long time. That would make for a really interesting interview to like talk to him about like the changes he's seen in the area, like what he thinks of the neighborhood now and going kind of through that process of like, what's it like? That's interesting content that could also then be repurposed. Like, for example, when you're going to sell a house in that neighborhood, you can even have some of the quotes of like, and here's what local residents, like again, a blog post be like saying about living in this neighborhood. And you can hear it direct from people who live there. Um, not a lot of people do this type of content. I think there's a lot of value there. Um, so it's something worth trying and putting into your content regularly. Tactic number 18, because this is a big topic out there right now. Um, put out content, and this is email, social, um, basically everywhere, blogs, all of it. Interest rates are up. What does that mean for you? What are your options? Because a lot of people, you know, they, there's kind of, you know, to oversimplify again, like a couple types, there's, you know, people on the fixed rates or fixed rate variable payments. Um, and then there's people who just their payments are up a lot. Not everyone knows what their options are here at this point, right? So this is a great opportunity to, you know, here's what's going on. Here's how it happened. Here's what you can do depending on the situation that you're in right now. And also preparing people like, for example, we know like as the next round of like fixed rates next year are coming up for renewal, there's going to be a lot of sticker shock from people who their, you know, payments are going to go from this to this. Now you can get ahead of it and help them start planning for what that could look like. This is great content to partner with like someone in the mortgage industry, for example, if you want. Um, but because this is going to be a very popular topic and we guys have all I mean, everyone in this webinar probably knows people who this is a challenge for them um putting out content around this topic and facing it head on uh, can help establish you as the expert when it comes to what they can do with their options when you know maybe they're not having the greatest time with what's happened with interest rates that's just a bonus thing that i wanted to throw in there because i like this one this is just a post you can go do today uh, for your niche, top mistakes X type of person makes when activity and how to avoid. So this could be like top mistakes first time buyers make when buying a condo and how to avoid it. Top mistakes uh, investors make when buying a duplex and how to avoid, right? So like put in some group that you have, the activity they take and how to avoid it. Um, this is a great hook for people to watch because anyone who would fall into like the X there is going to want to watch or read whatever this post is. Um, one like this can easily fall into clickbait territory if there's no payoff, right? So if it's like super generic, pointless advice that they didn't actually need, um, better not to do that post. But if you can actually give them like solid information on this, that's like, truly delivers on the promise of the headline this content does really 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 well um so save that use that you can do it regularly like this doesn't have to be it's one post like you can sub in so many different versions of this over time um like you could probably redo this one almost once a month 
um, with new content. And then, um, and I will be sending this out after the webinar is over. So basically as soon as it's done, I will upload it to YouTube after it processes everything and send it out. Now, if you do want more tips like this every week in your inbox, I'm going to hard sell here. I personally write an email that goes out every Thursday and we charge a whopping $10 a month paid annually. Um, and basically we, every Thursday I send out ideas. I have tactics, strategies. Sometimes we include Canva templates or hooks, new hooks you can use. Basically I just fill an email every Thursday morning, put it into your inbox, it's 10 bucks a month again, paid annually. Um, and I believe Jen is going to put the link, um, in there. Yep. She just put it in. Um, but yeah, if you guys do want to work with or get that type of email from me every week, that's the way to do it. Uh, I will send out an email shortly with the, you know, all the tactics there. Um, and I would love actually your guys feedback here for a minute while we're here. Um, one of the things we're looking at doing is a separate membership program that basically like you attend a webinar like this, there's 18 tactics here that then the membership program would be like, okay, for each tactic, as an example, it would be a playbook of step-by-step -step how to put it in. So like all the resources you would need to do each one. And you would then get all those, like you hear the content here, then the membership's like, and here's step-by-step. -step. Would that be something you guys would be interested in um, if we were to launch it? Uh, Cause that's one of the things we're looking at is how can we better support people on the implementation side? Cause I generally speaking, know very well that when I do webinars, when anyone does content, that maybe 1% of people are going to take the action. <laughs> um, and I'd love to, I think this could be one way to help make more people actually be able to do this. Um, it looks like people are interested in that, um, which I like. So this could be something that hopefully we can put out soon. Um, but basically, again, the goal will be, we want to support you and do it. But I'm glad everyone seemed to be enjoying this webinar. Um, <laughs> It's a brand new one that we created. Uh, I will. Be, I just actually finished it last night. <laughs> uh, like brand, brand new. Um, but I will send out the recording as soon as we get done. I really appreciate um, you guys coming and spending time with me today. Uh, I always, I don't take it for granted when you're taking time out of your business. I know sometimes it's hard to take an hour away. Um, so again, I really appreciate it. And we will be chatting soon. And I'd love to hear. Um, if you guys implement these, what happens, please let me know. I, I love hearing that feedback because um, I kind of put this stuff out there and then sometimes we don't hear what happens once you implement it. So I'd love to, again, hear um, feedback from you guys when you're implementing these, what the results are like. So thank you again. Really appreciate you guys spending your time with me today um, and stay tuned for the next webinar and more content coming out. And I will send this out shortly. So thank you very much, everyone. And we will chat soon. So we're going to end this here. Hope you guys all have a great day and reach out if you guys need anything at any time.